Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Natasha Naomi, and here on this channel, we focus on things such as fashion, beauty, and lifestyle. So in today's video, we are going to be threading our brows. So I've gotten my brows threaded since I was like, I don't know, 16, maybe 15. And all they use is a piece of thread. So you see me, I have my little circle of a thread. I wrap it around my hand six or seven times, and that creates some scissors. So once you have your little triangle, you put the hair in between the two pieces of thread or in between your triangle. And all you do is you use your opposite hand and you open up your hand, which will turn the thread into some scissors or tweezers rather, because it really plucks it right out of your skin. So this feels so good, you guys. But as soon as I get some longer uh, hairs in there, you'll see I start to tear up. My eye gets a tear in. Uh, I was actually crying throughout this whole video because that's what it makes me do every time I'm in the chair anyways. So, yeah. So, yeah. I really enjoyed this. I will admit that I think I may have... Well, what you'll see it later on in the video. The brows don't come out super even, but that's just because my brows are not ever even. Like, even when I go and get them done professionally... It's really rare that someone can get my brows to be really, really even. Um, so over on Instagram, I did a little poll and I asked y'all what I should talk about today. And pretty much <laughs> within the last hour, everyone has voted that I should talk about my journey with entrepreneurship. So as many of you know, if you know me in real life, you know that I am a massage therapist. And so I went to massage therapy school in about 2019. And right out of school, I worked, where did I work at? I'll say I just worked at a franchise massage business, like a very popular uh, entry level franchise business. And I was really kind of scared because while we were in school they kind of told us like this is what you can make this is the potential this is the type of lifestyle you can be living if you complete school so when i got out of school and i went to this franchise business they were actually only paying like 22 dollars an hour for a massage therapist that's really the lowest of the low that you can get paid and pretty much how they marketed us um to their business to work for them was like, oh, tips are going to be great. And tips were, you know, for someone fresh out of school, they were decent or whatever. So that was that. But right out of school, I was scared because I was like, dang, this is not what I signed up for. This is not what I was looking forward to, this, that, and the third. So to make a long story, well, we got a lot of time, so I might as well not cut out any parts. So anyways, I worked this franchise for about two months because I couldn't take it. I could not take it because right before massage therapy school, I was a loan officer. And so I, w I really wasn't making that much more after massage therapy school and I couldn't have it that way. So I gained just enough experience um, in my first job as a massage therapist. And then I moved up into a spa. And I will say that even though the pay wasn't much more, it was a lot more fun and I learned a lot more, so it was still worth it. So I went from making $22 an hour as an entry-level massage therapist, then my pay raise went up to $30 an hour at the spa. That's when I really uh, began to gain my skills as a massage therapist, I'll say. I got a lot more practice in, um, and the spa, the difference between like a spa setting as a massage therapist and just your regular franchise was the treatments and the quality and just the environment of the space. There's a huge, huge difference. And I really like the spa setting. It's just, it gives luxury. It gives expensive. It gives, um, you're, you're constantly surrounded by people who prioritize self-care in a way that was new for me and so that was really really cool so fast forward about two three years later after I'm at this spa for quite a while where did I go after the spa oh after that spa I actually found a really 
small intimate space that I worked at, which I really liked because this is where the entrepreneurship part starts to become something that's it starts to really introduce itself into my life. So um, I went from working at a spa to working for someone who really worked for herself and she had grown so much that she had been hiring people. Um, and she was really, really cool. She was, man, still super grateful for her. She really opened me up to the idea of running my own spa and having my own thing and my own business. And um, she really taught me so much about the business side of massage therapy, which is actually quite simple because as a massage therapist, I mean, the main thing you need is yourself. You need to make sure that you have your table, your sheets, your oil, some music, and that's really about it. So yeah, she taught me a lot about like the back end of massage therapy and how to kind of market myself. And she really, she wasn't gatekeeping at all. She really wanted to see me win. So shout out to her. That was super cool. We actually became kind of like family. So anyways, after the spa, I met this lady. She taught me everything that I know, really. Even, and the crazy part is, in massage therapy school, even as far as massage goes, you learn what you need to learn to get you enough to, like, maintain a job. But once you're out in the field, in the massage therapy world, in order to become a good massage therapist, you have to, you absolutely have to learn from other massage therapists about what feels good and you have to practice on each other and you really have to uh, be open in that way to open to learning new moves and new skills and new techniques um new modalities that's really kind of the only way you can mis you can survive in the massage therapy industry in my personal opinion um so after that job i went to where did I go after that? I don't want to name drop because <laughs> it's all pretty local. But, uh, oh, yeah. Okay. So after I left her, and the reason why I left that job was because it was really far from my home and my car had broke down and I couldn't afford to get in the car. So I had to find a spa or a massage studio closer to me. And, um, yeah. I found a massage studio a lot closer to me and I started working there like really, really soon. I went in for an interview. She hired me that day and I started working like the next day and everything went well for, I'll say about the first nine months at that job. Um, my boss there was actually pretty cool too. She taught me, you know, she was a little more uh, hesitant to teach me about the business side of massage therapy as far as how to be independent. And what's interesting is how she became a spa owner was the business was actually gifted to her. Um, the last spa owner of that spa um, ended up like suffering with a alcohol problem from what I remember. And he ended up just gifting her that business. So she really lucked out with that. But anyways, long story short, I was there for about nine months. And I started to notice that she did not like how much my like regulars liked me. She started to feel intimidated by it. And I remember um, there was a point in time where she, <laughs> she kept asking me to massage her and she kept wanting to trade. And I was like, not she's learning off of me, but I can't learn off of her. And so I started to, this is when I learned a lot just in my personal life that like, it's okay to say no. It's okay to not be a people pleaser. Cause that's another thing as a massage therapist, that's all you do. When the time you have a 60 minute massage, your main goal is to make them feel good. Your main goal is to listen to their body's needs and accommodate what they need. You're accommodating pressure, you're accommodating speed, you're in tune with their tissues, you're responding to muscles, you're looking out for uh, the speed of their breath, and are they huffing and puffing, are they comfortable, are they moving around a lot, so it's a whole lot of catering to an individual, so 
on the flip side of that, I had to learn that it was okay for me to say no to her. And once I started saying no to her, I'm not saying this, but I am saying my tips started to disappear. My tips started to go missing. Um, but my regulars was, were still as happy with me at the end of our sessions. So I know it wasn't them that was tipping me less. I'm not saying nothing. All I'm saying is something wasn't right. And when you know something's not right, it got to the point where I was like, every day I kind of felt like I was betraying myself because I knew that I had always had a passion for massage therapy from the very beginning. And it, okay, so I actually forgot to tell you all this part. How I even became a massage therapist was I was giving my boyfriend at the time a massage and he was like, yo, you're really good at this. You should go to massage therapy school. And from that point, I went the next day. I went to the school. I signed up. Everything felt right. I'm a very intuitive person. So when things feel right to me, I'm on it. Like, it's just who I am. It's always been who I am. It's all, it'll always be who I am. Like, so when something feels right to me, it just feels right. And from the very first idea of him planting that seed in my mind of like, yo, you could do this as a profession. It just made sense. It made sense to everything in me. So um yeah but anyways back to the story <laughs> uh yeah she kept asking me to massage her she kept wanting to trade and I remember feeling like damn she's not even that good of a massage therapist because my back still hurts after our trade and she feels amazing so I know I got a good skill I know that I'm a major asset to her business I just got to figure out how do I do this for myself so boom, now it is 2020, right before the virus took off, right? Right in, I'll say about January of 2020, before the virus even took off, I could feel something was coming in my spirit. And it was so crazy how this happened. So sorry if you can hear the train of the room, let's do a train. It was so crazy how this all happened. It was one day I woke up that morning and I was just like, no, I'm not going into work today. I'm not going. This is the day. And I just remember how scared I was. But I also remember how excited I was. And I, I just allowed the excitement to overrule the fear. And I've always been a go-getter. I've always kind of been a survivor as well. And that's another story for another day. But like, so I knew that me as an individual, I am the queen of making shit happen. Like if I want something to happen, I'm going to make it happen. So uh, yeah, I woke up one morning and I was like, you know what? I'm not going today. I don't even think that I even had the, uh, I don't think I even had the, like the courage to quit. I just ignored my phone that day and I came up with a grand master plan of like wait rewind rewind because I totally see I should have wrote this down and I didn't I'm just kind of like going off and I got a lot of time because somehow this video is like 30 minutes long I don't know how but somehow it's 30 minutes long so anyways rewind before this job before the whole tip started missing and she started asking me to massage her a whole lot she was trying to learn from me but she wasn't trying to let me learn from her before that, there's this really cool, if you're a massage therapist or if you're interested in massage therapy, there's this really cool app called Zeal, and it's like nationwide, I'm pretty sure. It's an app you can download on your phone, and you can have a massage therapist come to your home and do the massage at your home. I was doing that as often as I could, on top of already working like a full-time job. And full time as a massage therapist is like four to five hours a day because that's kind of, that's that's a lot of physical labor. That's one thing a lot of people don't realize about being a massage therapist is that it's physical labor all the time. And because of my height, it's a lot of physical labor for me because I am quite short and I'm smaller. So um, I say that to say that after my four hours, four to five hour shifts at the spa. I would hop on Zeal on the app. I would load up my personal massage therapy table that I had at home because they give that to you after school, of course. Put it in my car, drive maybe 20, 30 minutes away, get to a stranger's home, set up my table, do the massage. And I really liked it. 
I actually, I mean, I wouldn't do it now because I have my own studio, so it just wouldn't make sense. If I was hungry like that, I would, and I still could, and that would be really cool because they pay really well. I really loved working for Zeal quite a bit. It was just easy. The payments was simple and easy. They paid well. Um, the clientele was always very safe, felt very safe. I'd never felt unsafe, and that was a big deal for me. Like, I, and that's another thing, too. We should kind of talk about that because, ugh, 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 ugh. You, it, the massage therapy world can get, <laughs> can get kind of crazy if you don't know what you're doing and uh, if you're just not paying attention. Like, you got to know what you're doing. You got to know what you're getting yourself into, and you got to pay attention because that can be life or death for massage therapists. Um. But anyways, golly, I do that a lot. Even when I'm talking to people, I just be all over the place a little bit. Back to, so I was already doing zeal. So I kind of already had a taste of what it was like to work for myself, in a sense. Um, and, it's, and the number one motivational thing for me was freedom. Like, I just always wanted to be my own boss. I always wanted to... I've always had power struggles with people of authority, especially because in the massage therapy industry, it is a woman dominated uh, industry. And I'm a young woman. And when I graduated massage therapy school, I was only 19. I was like the youngest in my class. There might have been someone younger than me, maybe 17 or 18. But for the most part, the massage therapy industry is full of like older women. Um, and so I had always struggled with my peers and stuff like that. I'd never, I never felt like it was fair just because an older woman, we were in the same position, but just cause she's older than me, she could tell me what to do. I was never one to go for that. Um, I always went against the grain with that and really challenged that narrative. So, and that was always a problem for me. I feel like, uh, for whatever reason, people always wanted to tell me what to do or how to do when in reality, like I'm the one making great tips I'm the one that has people constantly asking for me to you know those are my regular clients like so anyways long story short back to my very last job as a massage therapist my tips went missing my tips started going missing I'm talking to the, my other massage therapist friend and I'm like bruh how is your tips going because she was good too and we both kind of agreed yeah we're gonna quit so I quit and she quit and what was cool was we began starting our businesses separately, but together. She, when any time, she liked to focus on couples massages. So her business, which by the way, has taken off and she has her own studio too. Uh, super proud of her. Like, it's so cool to see my girls win. It's so cool to get it out of the mud with people. Like, that is really, really cool. It's been a blessing and what a way to build a bond and a connection. But anyways. Uh, so yeah, we quit together, but she started getting a lot more business than me on her own, just right out the gate, I feel like, from what I remember, and she was an older woman, so she really knew how to, um, I'll just say it, hold conversations with other older people. I felt like, even though I'm a great massage therapist, and I've always been pretty good from what people report to me, outside of massage therapy even like right outside of the massage and right after the massage you're asking them how do they feel could I have done this differently was there any areas that I may have hurt you you may be sore this that and the third I didn't get a, the hang of how to talk to people until really like 2020 so I was still learning like this whole throughout this whole time I was still learning in many different ways as far as even you know just everything new techniques how to talk to people how to be professional, how to um, present myself, things like that. So she started getting really busy with couples massages and I was her partner because we had both just kind of quit our jobs. And then what was crazy was we had quit literally like two or three weeks before the pandemic. So we got out, we started to build our little clientele, the pandemic hit that squad had to lay off a lot of people anyways we were probably already going to get laid off that was the craziest part for me but as soon as i quit that very day i typed into google how to become uh, a solo massage therapist how to become an independent massage therapist how to start an llc and literally google has it laid out for me like 
just like for anybody. Um, so I literally, that's all I did. I watched YouTube videos. I Googled it. What I didn't know, I just Googled. I swear. What I did not know, I Googled. And I had to learn a lot about how to find real information, like anything. And then I learned really quickly, like any website that has .gov is a government website. Any website that has .edu is likely coming from a school or an institution or a college of some sort. So once I learned how to dissect what information was real on the internet, everything became really easy. I'm not even going to lie. It just became a matter of paying for licenses and paying fees and things like that. So once I had my business established, I lived on the top floor of my apartment. I was on the sixth floor. It's crazy to talk about this now because I realized, bro, I was so hungry. I was so motivated. I was so brave. Like, for me to quit my job and not have a plan, but for me to made it happen and to now to look back in hindsight and be like, bro, if I didn't do that exactly at the time that I did it, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. Because check this out. So this is when it starts to get really interesting and really beautiful and powerful for me. I started my LLC that day, got my business on Google, a Google My, uh, you know, Google My Business profile put myself on the map. I literally started getting calls. I started posting myself on social media, which I don't do anymore because I don't need to now. And I don't really like it. I like to keep social media for my personal social media. I like to, or for this type of stuff, vlogs and stuff like that. Um, that's just the way I go. But of course, as I grow, I understand the power that social media can bring. But honestly, I don't want to be any busier than what I am right now. I'm in a very comfortable space. Um, but yeah, so I started my business. I went down to my leasing office of my apartments and I let them know like, hey, would it be okay if I was to put up flyers around the building um, to, because I just started a business. And they were like, yeah, sure, bring us some business cards. We'll pass them out, bring us some flyers. They were really impressed and really excited for me. And so that was super great. Within a few days, within a few days of that happening, they actually reached out to me and they were like, hey, we have some spaces that are going to actually be specifically for entrepreneurs. They're called live and work spaces and the bottom half of my apartment now is dedicated to my business. And the top half is just a studio where I can put my bed, it's right in the kitchen and there's a nice big old bathroom. And so it was so crazy how it happened because they were like, well, we have one space left. Do you want it? I was like, oh, yeah, I want it. Before I even seen what it looked like, this, that, and the third, I was like, oh, yeah, I want it. Everything happened so fast. I signed the lease and I got the keys. And when I walked in, I wept because the stairs you guys seen in my last vlog, I had just recently put that on my vision board a few months prior to, like literally three months prior to. I'd always wanted spiral stairs. Um, I never even knew that this was like a thing that could happen for me, but because I follow my intuition and my self-respect, for sure, I think that a lot of the times, um, I think a lot of the times when you're in opposition or when you're in a position where you feel disrespected, it's actually an opportunity for you to show up in a different way, so yeah, because I felt like she was short of me on my tips and she was like taken from me in a way where she wasn't really willing to give in return I stood on my self-respect and if I hadn't done that I would have still been working at a shitty job and probably been getting you know just screwed over like so yeah long story short I got my keys I moved in and my phone has been ringing ever since I started to build my clientele of course there were and even now of course there's times where I'm like dang I wish I had more business or dang, I wish I had some help because I have too much business. It, it's always a ebb and a flow. And it comes in waves. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the story of how I started my first business. And then once I started my first business and I was, and once I started making money, you got to realize you go from making $30, $40 an hour, $40 for a 90 minute, um, to a full price massage and everyone knows at least in this area a full price massage is about $110 to $125 an hour so you go from making $30 to $100 an hour 
even though you're working less hours, you're still making more money and you have hella time. So anybody that's interested in becoming a massage therapist, I highly recommend it. In the same breath, massage can be kind of dangerous. I've had some instances here that is really another story for another day. I've had some interests instances in my own studio that had made me really want to quit massage therapy and I did (laughs) I there was one time something terrible happened it really scared me and so I quit massage therapy for a minute I was like you know what I'm not doing it no more my my license of course was still active but I had temporarily shut down my business I had got a job at Amazon I worked at an Amazon warehouse I went to the training the training it was at least like a week by the time I got out on the Amazon warehouse floor, baby, I was only there. I think I only completed two shifts, two 10 hour shifts. And I was like, oh my God, I got to go back to massage therapy as soon as possible because this is not it. So I reopened my business. I made the business for women only and shout out to everyone that encouraged me to go this route because it's just crazy I mean I gained so much support during that time you know and which makes me grateful for the instance that it happened because I was able to corner the market in a way where very few massage therapists have cornered the market especially in my area so um, so yeah now my spa is for women only currently and I do pretty well I do pretty well for myself once I started that business though I realized I could start another business. So once again, I just went back to the drawing board, AKA Google. I typed into Google, what is an easy business I can start with low startup costs and that makes decent amount of money and low effort, straight up. I had to be honest, like, I don't wanna work my ass off anymore. So how can I make money that's easy, quick and decent money? And what kept coming up was a notary public. And so I am also a notary public. I have my own business as far as that, which opens so many doors for me, like literally so many doors for me. Um, So that's been super cool. And it actually pays decent amount of money because ever since the virus hit, the banks don't do notarizations anymore or they're just not open to that as much. So oftentimes people have to seek out people like me that are notary publics just on their own. And that income brings me that's that's really where my play money is and now I'm looking at my money differently like one income may be for bills you know another income may be for play money another income may be for savings and that's just how I think and that's how I'm thinking now at least and so I'm really really happy with where I'm at with that but yeah that's kind of my entrepreneurship um, story and now and it's like one one thing one good thing leads to another good thing and now i actually have the courage to do youtube and youtube has been my dream since i was 16 or 17. just i remember watching aliyah j before aliyah's face because aliyah's face is big aliyah's face she's the big dog now but before aliyah's face we had aliyah j and i'll never forget i really grew up with aliyah j and so to watch her blow up um was always kind of my dream. And so now I think that the dream has changed. Uh, Blowing up would be cool, of course, but like even just doing this now, like this voiceover as I'm watching my video in my studio, in my space, just, you know, it's like, man, why wouldn't I make it? If I just go hard, like I've been going hard with everything else I went hard with, (laughs) baby baby I want to give it to you baby but anyways yeah man oh this is the part of the video where I do a lash serum review and this lash serum is bomb so what's funny is when I recorded this video uh, I recorded this video about a month ago so my brows have kind of grown all the way back I'm not even gonna hold you I don't know if it's the vitamins I'm taking or just because I'm a hairy girl and I am a hairy girl so yeah I'm gonna have to do another brow tutorial because I do recognize that I was kind of out of frame a lot of this video but content is content anyways 
my brows, my lashes from this serum has grown so much, y'all. I highly recommend this serum. I will be ordering some more. Uh, you can get the lash serum in your eyes and it doesn't burn at all, at least not me. And my bottom lashes are growing so thick. I'm almost like, dang, are they really growing or not? But yeah, no, they're growing. They're definitely growing. My lashes are longer. I want them to be thicker, so I'm hoping that this thickens them up too. And it's only been an, a month, and every day I'm kind of like, wow. Wow, I love how long my lashes are. They just look and feel so healthy too, so I highly recommend this lash serum. I actually got this lash serum um, from a girl on TikTok. I didn't get it from her. I got it on Amazon, but she is the one that recommended it to us all. So yeah. I really love this lash serum. Highly, highly, highly recommend. But yeah, that's my entrepreneurship story. If you guys have any questions or, uh, yeah, I'm an open book. Many people know that. I've been, I might be a little too open. I love sharing. I love watching people win. I love helping people and inspiring people. And I love, I really love those people that do that to me. I wasn't always like this, but Thank goodness I've had the opportunity to come across people like that, that are like, bro, you can do it. You can do this. You can do that. You can do this and you can do that. And I did. I did this and I did that and I took their advice and um, I really, really, really embraced that and allowed them to pour into me. So I hope I can do that for y'all too. But yeah, that's my story. And I have my own studio. I work for myself. It's one of my best accomplishments yet. And it's one of the best feelings I've ever had. Even when I'm not super duper busy and I'm kind of making not as much as I would like, it's still better than working for someone else and you don't know where your money's going. And it's still better than working from someone else who just wants to kind of take from you and not give. And it's also still better than, even if your boss is cool, think about it. I was getting paid $30 at the spa. They were still charging 130 for the hour. So they made their $100 off of me and I did all the work. So anyways, yeah, long story short, if you have a skill, work for yourself. If you have to get on TaskRabbit first just to get comfortable, do that. If you have to put yourself on uh, Facebook Marketplace, do that. You know what I'm saying? Get yourself out there. Give yourself a chance because if you're doing it, then you can do it. So do it because I'm doing it and I'm going to keep doing it. And I can't wait to see where this goes for me, this whole YouTube thing, because I've always been passionate about it. So yeah, I'm going to just keep getting better, keep growing into myself, really allowing myself to be who I already am, um, validating myself and surrounding myself around people who do the same for themselves. Uh, yeah. So Vi Beauty Eyelash Growth Serum, highly recommend. Uh, the girls on TikTok were saying that I needed to try the one that's in like the purple rainbow bottle. So I don't know. I really like this. It came in some really sturdy packaging. I really like the bottle that the serum is in. So yeah, but I hope that you guys did enjoy this video. And here is my outro. Ciao.